Hi everybody, Ken Your Gaming here, and welcome back to another Uber review. Today I'll be looking at Fabulous Passaland, true form of the widely loved and admired Summer Luga. If you find yourself enjoying this video, check out the other 23 reviews I've made for a bunch of different cats, and that playlist is in the description. Also, for those of you who don't know, I do have a Discord server, so you know, don't be shy, come on in. It's pretty chill, and I'm way more active on Discord than I am on YouTube. I'm kind of a lazy uploader, I just upload when I feel like it, but you know, texting on Discord's easy, so I do that a lot. Anyway, thanks for hearing me plug all my stuff, now back to Summer Luga. Summer Luga is a super backline attacker, standing at a whopping 650 range. This high range is balanced out by her low health and lack of any knockback counts, so if the enemies manage to reach her, she's basically dead already. Additionally, Summer Luga has a ridiculously long cooldown. It takes 5 minutes and 24 seconds to deploy a second Summer Luga, so you better keep the first one alive, because in the time it takes for a second Summer Luga to be ready, you'll probably be eligible for senior citizen discounts by then. These drawbacks to using Summer Luga are pretty heavy, so what's her attacking power? Well, on her stat sheet, it's 17,000 damage and a measly 898 DPS, which is less than a single Yongxi cat. Summer Luga's only ability changes this, however, that being a level 8 surge attack. She currently has the highest surge attack level in the game, and this surge exists on the battlefield for 5.33 seconds, and in theory, multiplies Summer Luga's damage to 153,000 and DPS to 8,081. That power coming from Summer Luga's standing range is pretty crazy. Of course, this number does rely on the surge actually hitting the enemies for every single tick of damage, which sadly is a pretty rare occurrence. The main problem with Summer Luga's surge is that it's super Super inaccurate. The surge can spawn anywhere from 150 to 1050 range away from Summer Luga. For your knowledge, surges are always 375 range wide, with 125 outward piercing and 250 inward piercing range from the spawn point. Summer Luga surge has 900 potential spawn points, giving it a 375 out of 900, aka roughly 42% chance of actually landing on the exact point you want it to. If you want the surge to hit one enemy in particular, throw that idea in the trash. Trust me, it feels even lower than 42% when you're actually using her. This feeling is deepened by her extremely long 19 second hiatus between attacks. To sum up everything I've said so far, Summer Luga is an RNG reliant attacker with zero survivability other than her high range, and takes forever to respawn and get to the front lines, having only 4 speed. I know that makes her sound like hot garbage, but she does have her uses despite it all. Although the surge spawns not really where you want it to most of the time, on stages where enemies have varied ranges, or stages where enemies are being perpetually spammed, she becomes a lot more reliable and useful. On these type of stages it becomes less important where the surge spawns, as long as it hits something. Of course you can still get super unlucky and have it spawn at 150 range, literally right on top of her, but you get my point. On swarm stages, her surge functions as a wall, keeping out all peon enemies by knocking them back over and over again until their demise. And on stages where all the enemies have different ranges, it increases the chance you'll hit one of them with her surge because there are more enemies over a more spread out field. The surge spawns basically anywhere, so you get it. Pretty simple. And of course, she's also very good against high ranged enemies like Leboyne, Kamel, Master A, etc. Even if the surge might not always hit them, having 650 range is still pretty rare, let's keep that in mind. With Summer Luka's uses discussed, let's go over her pros and cons. Summer Luga has the pros of 650 range, having the strongest surge attack in the game currently, as well as insane hypothetical damage and DPS stats, and these stats are only at level 30, they only get better with boost, and these qualities make Summer Luga a very unique attacker to use, and with some luck her surges can come in clutch, as well as being a lot of fun to use when things go your way. However, Summer Luga has plenty of qualities to bog her down, those being horrible survivability, a super long recharge time and time to an attacks, as well as long four swing, slow speed, and the surge being very accurate and luck based. So Summer Luga is a very interesting attacker, but is very much not reliable or sustainable. With pros and cons discussed, let's plug her into the tier list. In early game, I gave Summer Luga a D. At this point in the game, you only have her evolved form Bikini Land, which is the exact same other than having a weaker surge attack. Having attackers from her impressive range is very rare in early game, but it's also very unneeded because early game isn't hard and she's bad at rushing stages because she's so slow. Somehow she manages to be less reliable than Bahamut, who's famous for missing his attacks. Progressing the mid game, I upped her to a C+. You can now unlock her true form, and there's a pretty good amount of SOL stages where she comes in handy, functioning as a pretty good swarm control uber, along with outranging backline threats like Master A, Kamel, Leboyne, all that stuff that sits at the back. I mean, I mean, Cyberpunk does the same thing, but he doesn't have an awesome surge attack. Arriving in late game, I kept Summer Luga at a C+. She's pretty good for completing starred SOL stages, as well as some Uncanny Legend stages, 
but by now you've probably amassed a bunch of ubers that outperform her in a lot of stages. For a lot of these unit reviews, I note whether those advent stages are good in or not, but honestly, I really only find Summer Luga useful in stories of legends and uncanny legends. Of course, she could be useful in some of the crazy and manic stages, but I'd rather a more consistent strategy than just hoping Summer Luga surge Deadeye snipes the enemies I want her to hit. On a plus note, however, she's pretty decent against Otham and Loki, two relevant late game relic enemies. Finally, her specialty ranking. As a super backliner, I gave Summer Luga a D+. Cyberpunk is much more reliable than she is, even though his damage ceiling is way lower. Other high range ubers like Aphrodite, Kintaro, and Saki are much more consistent than her too. While Bikini Land's niche is rare, she's definitely bottom of the barrel, even here. Sad but true. If Ponos gives her talents, I really hope she gets the survivor ability and lower cooldown. Or you know, maybe like wave immunity or something. I mean, if there's a wave enemy, she's as good as dead. It's just the curse of the Nekalugas, man. They all just have to be bad. Except like Shishlin and Lufalan, but other than that, they have the curse of mid. It's so sad, and she'd be really fun if she didn't die instantly to everything. With all that said and done, that wraps up today's Uber review. If you've watched this far, thank you, you're a real goat. Please like and sub if you enjoyed, and drop a comment on whether you think my take is accurate or not. As mentioned in the beginning of the video, my unit review playlist and Discord server are both linked in the description, so check those out if you want to see more. Even though I shitpost about this unit quite a lot, I had to be honest in this video. She may be a top tier waifu, but she's also a low tier uber, and I think the 6 angel is a much funnier and less rage worthy surge uber to play with. Seriously, when Summer Luga surge misses more than once, I just, I just get tilted. Also, they should have given her wave immune, she's in a bathing suit, like the beach waves wave immune. That way she might actually have some sort of niche. Uh, I digress though. Have a good day, night, or wherever you are, and take care y'all. Talk to you in the next video. Peace.